So let's start coding. We are now in the Google Earth Engine code editor. You can go to the code editor and load this repository. The link to the repository is given to you along with the video. Uh, this is a repository named end-to-end -end projects and there's a folder called calculating rainfall deviation. Uh, it contains seven scripts and each script builds on the previous one. The structure of the uh, course is that we'll start with the script A, we'll build on it and make a complete script for that step. And in the next step, we'll take that script and add stuff to it. Right, so we go from script one to script seven, and then we'll have the complete project built. So I want you to code along with me. Uh, ideally, you, you listen and see how I'm uh, coding. I'll show you some uh, techniques and I'll explain the concepts. Once I'm done, ideally you pause the video and go back to your code editor, try to code it yourself. You may run into errors, try to fix that errors and attempt to arrive at the uh, complete step that I completed in the video. And by doing so, you'll really get the practice of coding. And if you get stuck, you can re-watch the video. And if you really want to see my solution, look at the script B, which will have the complete solution that I'm coding. Okay, so let's get started. The first step uh, in the first script, we'll just try to load and understand the chirps data. So how do I find the data? I can just search here. Uh, I can search for chirps and you can see there are uh, two results here, chirps daily and chirps spent time. And as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, unless you have a specific need for a daily data, always prefer the pentard data. Uh, you can click here to just look at more uh, information about the data set. The most important is the bands. You can look at the bands. You'll see here, this is a 0 0.05 degrees uh, resolution data, which is about six kilometers. And it's got one band called precipitation, and these are the min and max value, and the units are millimeter per pentard, right? So you can just click import and import this to our script. I'll just name it chirps. So now I have uh, a chirps image collection uh, with the data in it. So the first step for us is to really filter this data to uh, uh, the dates that we want. So uh, let's start filtering it. So I'll just say, I'll start from here. So we loaded the Penta data. I'll filter to your 2017 data. So let's say var filtered equals, we'll take the chirps data set and say filter. And we're applying a date filter. So we can say EE filter date, and we can give it a start and end date. So we'll just say 2017, 01, zero one and we'll, we want a full year. So we'll just do 2018, zero one, zero one. And in this case, you can even do 2017, 2031, that's fine. Uh, the date filter works so that the last, the end date is not included, but uh, the chirps data is in Pentard. So the last Pentard would be starting on 25th December. So that'll be included anyway. So you'll get the same results. But if you have data sets that is daily data, you would want to do till 2018-0101 so that it covers the full 365 days for the year. So we applied this filter and uh, let's see what's in the filter data. And you can see we have 72 uh, different images for the year. And you can see each image, uh, this image starts on 1st January and there's a pentad, so it goes all the way till end of 5th January and the second image is for the 6th January and so on. And you have data for the full year and the last pentad is at uh, 26th December and it goes till end of December. And so we have this images for throughout the year. And as I mentioned, uh, for rainfall data, we generally want to compute the total. So let's just compute the total rainfall for a year and display it on the map. So how do we compute the total? We can do a sum or the sum operation is actually a reduction operation. So we have at this point an image collection. Remember when we printed it, it says image collection. And what happens if we reduce an image collection, you get an image. And we're gonna reduce this image by using the reducer sum. So we can say filtered dot reduce e -E reducer sum. Okay. And this will give us an image, which is the total image. And 
you know, there are other things that provide you shorthand for doing this. You can just do this. That's also fine. Uh, this will give you the same thing, but this dot sum is actually a shorthand for uh, e reducer sum reducer. And if you get in the habit of writing the full one, you will come handy where you want to apply a reducer, which is not, doesn't provide a shorthand. So now we have the total uh, image. Let's just print and see what this image is before we want to add it to the map. And always remember when you want to export something or when you're going to add something to the map, you want an image, not an image collection. So uh, you can see we took an image collection, reduced it, and now the reduced image has one band called precipitation sum, and that is the sum of that image. So let's just add it to the map. Before that, we need to kind of uh, determine how we're going to visualize it. So we'll define a visualization parameters. Min value is zero, zero mm precipitation. Max, what should be a max value for this? Remember the each image was millimeter per pentad. And when you summed up, we have a millimeter per year. So what's a good value uh, that would be a max precipitation per year? And uh, you can just do some searching around about 2000 is a good value where most regions in the world would have less than 200 millimeters of rain per year. So let's just try with 2000 and see what's the uh, result we get. And uh, you want to have a palette because this is a graduated data. So you want to display it in different color. And this palette, we can have two colors where we can have say white and blue where zero value will be white, 2000 will be blue, and all the intermediate value will be an interpolated color between those two. So now we have our visualization parameter, let's add it to the map. So map.add layer, total, this params, and we can say total. When I run this, you will now get an image displayed, which is the total precipitation uh, for the whole world. And remember this data set is for, it's a global data set. Each image is a global image. And now you can see what was the rainfall like in, you know, across India, you know, the Eastern part gets a lot of rainfall in South India. This is the Western Ghats, which get more rainfall. Now just click around. So if you click around at any pixel, you'll see the total sum here. So. Uh, this pixel had 877 millimeter of rainfall. And if you click somewhere over the Middle East, uh, it was only 77 and you know, uh, things are there. So now you know how to load the, pen, the chirps data set, sum it up for the entire year and display it on the map. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. We'll work on the next script two next.